There comes a point where making a decision becomes paramount. The need to take action trumps the desire one may have for ensuring the correct decision is made in the first place. My friends, I have come to you to make that decision for you. Mulvat, if you've watched my previous video where I discussed the variety of VPNs currently on the market, you remember that I briefly glossed over Mulvan VPN and mentioned that they also have a browser on offer. To differentiate themselves from other browsers, Mulvad took the initiative to work with the Tor project in order to develop their browser. The browser is based on Firefox, as all privacy-focused browsers should be, of course. I'm looking at you, Brave. Mulvad insists that if you want to take your privacy seriously, you should utilize a trusted VPN in conjunction with the Mulvad browser. Now, of course, having a VPN of their own on offer, it's clear which one Mulvad would prefer you use. However, in my opinion anyway, the Mulvad VPN offer is pretty damn good if you really value your privacy on the cheap. And, unless you're rocking your own VPN that you can trust, Mulvad VPN is probably as good as it's going to get for you. I suppose you could settle for another one like Proton VPN, which have their free tier, but that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you which one you should choose as a direct contradiction to my opening statement. If you want my opinion on which VPN is best, you should watch my video that I released just uh, last week. Regardless, I like to see the Mulvad browser as the reincarnation of the Tor browser if the Tor network didn't exist. The Mulvad browser has all of the same safety features as the Tor browser without the direct incorporation of the Tor network and the ability to connect to it. So, assuming that you want to get started utilizing the Mulvad browser, head on over to the website at uh, mulvad.net and you can see they've got the VPN and browser options right next to each other. Click on the browser click on the browser option, download browser, they got it for your Windows operating system, your Mac OS operating system, and your Linux distros. So for all of you based chads using a Linux distribution, obviously the only real ones are Debian and Arch, but that's, uh, that's a topic for another time. You can come over here and you've got some instructions on how to install it from your whichever Ubuntu distrib um, repository it uses these days. I, I haven't used Ubuntu in years, but that's all there for you and this is what you'll get so you're gonna get this lovely looking browser so pff, let's just go through it so the first thing you've probably noticed is the massive gray border around the edge you can see my mouse cursor here and how it can go outside of this blue box so what this is now basically borrowed from the tor browser right so the what it's actually trying to do is it's trying to hide the full resolution of the display from the browser itself. Well, not the browser, but the web page that you're on, right? So the web page can only see how big the blue border is that it's actually displaying on. So if you're on a... Uh, well, well, because it's from the Tor browser, in this case anyway, when you go onto an Onion site on Tor, and for whatever reason you full screen it, it's so the web page can't see your actual resolution of your monitor so this one that i'm recording on is full hd 1920 by 1080 but if you're this little web page you can't see that you can only see what it's displayed on now this is this is a measure this is a countermeasure for fingerprinting your web browser so what the web page could do is it could use that as something to uniquely identify your current browser session uh, which isn't good, which is why when you use Tor, the best advice is to keep it minimized. So when you initially open Tor, it shouldn't open in full screen unless you've changed it. It should open in like a small little window. You should keep it in that little window and not mess about with it because that's going with the assumption that most people will leave their web browser, you know, that minimized. So that's just one less, that's just one less unique identifier that web pages can use to identify you. But anyway, what else do we have here? Uh, let's go into the ch 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 help section. So as you can see, this is very much Firefox slash Tor um, user interface. Okay, it's all based on, on Firefox. So if we go into the help section about Mulvad browser, we can see it's 
well it's basically exactly the same as the Firefox one just with the uh, Mulvad skin on it so you can see what um, the current version of Firefox that it's based on which will obviously change as updates um, and it goes into detail about blah 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 a collaboration between Mulvad VPN and the Tor project and and it's got some links for you so not too bad one thing that I did find quite interesting was the telemetry option so they actually have a dedicated section to the telemetry that's used within Mulvad and I was thinking telemetry you know the the whole point of using Mulvad is that so there isn't any telemetry so I went ahead and clicked on it and uh, and uh, <laughs> this is what I got telemetry information telemetry is disabled in the Mulvad browser thank god for that I was getting really worried for a second and so I what I did was I went into the about about section in the in the browser so if you use if you type in about colon and then uh, any one of these different sections I just went with about about so I've got like an overview you can actually go into some of the details with the browser itself so if we go into uh, I don't know about config right uh, uh, one the yeah, access yeah except risk and continue and then show all there you go so it comes so this is the basic default installation of the Mulvad browser so uh, you can do that the about about thing um, or about config you can do that in any Firefox browser I don't know about chromium browsers probably I'm imagining that's how you would access something like this um, but I'm not too sure of the actual syntax if you're using a chrome based browser which you shouldn't by the way you should use a Firefox based browser because chromium is spyware not well, unless you have like the degoogled chromium then you know that's that's acceptable but anything else is unacceptable if you're using brave still if you're still using brave i'm sorry it's just not it's it's not it it's not it chief and uh, so i don't really understand what most of this is there are some of them which you need to modify if you're using base firefox if you're wanting like a hardened firefox install this is where you'll go to make some of those changes um, and Mulvad browser makes the first step easy for you because you don't have to do any of that it just gets rid of it all for you what else do we go into uh, yes okay so it's got the security settings as well uh, that's also seen in the Tor browser so we have standard safer and safest I'm imagining this does exactly the same as what it does in Tor. So if you use the safest one, it breaks all the websites you go on, but you don't have to worry about JavaScript. And then if you're using standard, then obviously it's going to load all the JavaScript and you know, you're opening yourself to a bunch of attack vectors that are enabled with the enabling of uh, JavaScript because you don't know what's going on in the background of the websites you go on. So a lot of it is like just slightly modified Firefox options we've got uh oh i should probably go into that actually so we have this dns section here uh and if we actually go up here uh here we go it has a little uh it's got a little icon here the little mulvad guy the little mole with the uh, the miner's hat on and this is where you can connect to different dns servers i think anyway i've not actually connected to one yet but if uh, yes okay so it's taken us to here so it's it's taken us to how to use the servers um, but they have some dns servers available for you to connect to uh where is it so yeah so they've got some of them listed here they've got the host names and which ones block which so you know if you're wanting to set it up to have all of these things you know if you just want ads and trackers blocked from the dns server then you can go to that one if you want everything gone then you go to that one you know you get the idea it's not too difficult i've not actually used any of these yet uh, maybe i should but uh, of course if you're just using this to, as sort of like a replacement for a hardened firefox install because obviously with the updates firefox do you don't really know what they're going to implement later on so there was a change with the telemetry options in default firefox which i know a lot of people weren't too happy with where it would um, enable them by default and unless you went in there to disable them it would enable telemetry um sending bits of your browser off to firefox you know for the whole quote you know testing and making sure that our product is working correctly yeah a load, load of load of crap in my opinion but you know that's just what they say uh, you have this new identity button which uh, well, closes all windows website sessions I'm not too sure what that actually does because it's not exactly resetting your 
you know, your um, talk connection because we're not connected at all. This is just a really hardened version of Firefox under the Mulvad brand. So I'm not too sure what that does. Though, then again, I haven't had a look to see what it does, but it's not immediately obvious what it would do other than, you know, uh, clear the current browser session. I mean, maybe that's what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure, but... Like I say, if we go back into settings, we have the general options here. You can change the font and all that. It's, it's all just the basic Firefox stuff. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so this is all just the normal Firefox stuff with the added bonus of using DuckDuckGo as a default search engine. If you like that or not, you know, I know DuckDuckGo has had a, a bit of a, a rocky uh, last couple years with their whole uh, harvesting user data and all that, but, you know, it does give you a few other different options down here as well, and Google's not on there, so maybe that's a positive. Privacy and security, yeah, so a few things are greyed out, um, so obviously you can uncheck that, but must restart. yeah, we don't want to do that. I mean, you, there's no point using Mulvad and then disabling the uh, private browsing feature, you may as well just use Firefox at that point, but yeah, to be honest, there's not a lot to go over because a lot of it is just either the Tor browser or hardened Firefox put together. That's pretty much what this is in my mind is it's the Tor browser without the Tor network com combined with hardened Firefox. And that's pretty much what it is with the added bonus of being able to uh, set up a proxy, you know, more, you know, it's built into it rather than you going into the settings and changing it that way. It's also got uBlock uh, Origin pre-installed as well so that's also a bonus i suppose i mean just download it see see what you think about it because the thing's free you may as well you're not going to lose anything by not by downloading it you know you're not paying money for it so give it a try see what you like about it uh it's definitely quite and it's definitely an interesting browser and it's also quite a good take i think on firefox as a whole this is what five this is what hardened firefox should be so if you ever do think about doing your own five, hardened Firefox, I'd recommend you check out Mulvad browser first. But yeah, I hope you found that useful or at least entertaining at some point. It's a good browser. And as long as you're not going on too many, you know, different sites, I tell you what, if we load up YouTube with the default settings, I'm not too sure if YouTube would actually work because of all the reliance on javascript because i know if you load it up oh we are that we are on the standard safe setting though so loading it up you know just fresh uh fresh install of mulvad no altering of the settings or anything oh, okay yeah so it does work yeah so it works fine so and then if we were to go up to here change this to safest of course it's going to be disabling all the javascript go back to youtube refresh it i don't think it's going to work too well in fact that is it that <laughs> That's all it loads. You're not going to be watching YouTube whilst keeping your uh, identity as safe as possible whilst not using the Tor network. But, you know, you, you, you win some and you lose some. So, But anyway, that's pretty much the overview of Mulvad. I think it's a, I think it's a really good browser. I think it fulfills a desire in the market. Uh, for a privacy respecting browser that you know actually cares and isn't just a we're not Google so that means we're better sort of browser like the video if you found some sort of entertainment or found it helpful in one way or the other uh, subscribe so you don't miss another video check out my other videos if you like stuff like this I've got a video that I released a couple years ago talking about <laughs> based web browsers I mean it's probably a bit outdated now I think I covered Waterfox on there and uh, Pale Moon yeah, so watch it if you want for a laugh. I don't even know if Pale Moon's getting updated anymore, probably, to be honest. But yeah, that's it for me today. I will see you in my next video. Have a good day.